Hi, welcome back. So this is video number four in our series of making Christmas, holiday, or anytime gifts, right? So, but it's getting close to Christmas time. So I told you yesterday we were going to make these birds. Now every year in my house, I, we make each have to make a Christmas ornament for our Christmas tree. And last year, this is what I made. And they're birds made out of cardboard and book pages. And all you need, if you guys want to make along with me, get some cardboard. And I, this is the one time I really love just using the cheapest possible glue, right? No special product, pair of scissors, cardboard. It can be anything. This is from like a recycled package I got yesterday in the mail. Okay. Now I made my own template up. All right, so let me just show it to you, and maybe I can, maybe I'll be able to, I'll try to scan it and put a PDF in the description box in a few days. Um, so, you know, you just want to draw your bird shape, and it has three of these little tail bits coming off, okay? Do you see? Three little bit of the tail bits, and then these are the two wings, okay? So I've made them in all sizes, super fun, super easy, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. Like here's the little tiny one that I'm gonna make, and this is a medium size one, okay? So then you wanna take your book pages and you wanna start tearing them. Now I tear them long ways, you can tear them any way you want, but at some point you do need long strips. So don't spend a lot of time making tiny pieces, you know, just, tear them long strips. I find the thinner the better because um, if you don't want people to see the words, okay? And use a thinner, you know, I'm all about the texture of book pages. Use thinner book pages for this. Some book pages have nicer, heftier book pages. Save those for your jelly printing. Um, use thin ones because you're going to put them one on top of the other and it sort of makes a bulk. You don't want them to be bulky. Okay, so then all you do is you just start gluing them down randomly. Now, the reason I have these all hanging off is I'm going to glue them down, wrap them around the side of my cardboard. Do you see how the cardboard has that, um, in. I'm learning, thanks you guys for being so patient with me and my crazy learning curve of, uh, my new stuff, my new little camera, which I'm so grateful for, but I still don't quite know how to use it very well. Anyway, so... Um, see how the cardboard has the little perforations in it? We're just going to wrap the book pages around it, okay? Now, um, you know, go to yard sales. You know, almost every yard sale will have a freebie or a 10 cent box, okay? Go to yard sales. Don't use, like, you know, somebody wrote me a comment saying that I was, like, destroying documents or something, I don't know, historical documents. Okay, so I just want a news flash for all of you who've ever, who have or have not ever been to the tropics. The tropics, what doesn't, the, the weather is just not kind to you here. I mean, it's a beautiful place to live, but it's not kind to your stuff, okay? So, um, there's absolutely no way that a book from the 30s or the 40s that could, could survive here without being properly preserved okay so let me just tell you the story of a very dear friend who's a rare book collector and he moved to the Hawaiian Islands and I tried to warn him before he moved to let go or leave his books back on the mainland unless he was going to live in a place that would properly preserve them which is basically virtually impossible here, but you know, you can't tell people anything. So he brings some of his coveted favorite books here. And what happens is, is within like six months, the bugs start eating them. He opens up one of the books and there, you know, he lives in a very nice house and he has, um, you know, air conditioning and all kinds of things that I don't have because I don't need it, but they ate his books. So he promptly sent the ones back to the mainland to be uh, debugified or whatever and then you know listened so I'm not harming any historical books and just so you know 
in anything that I do. And also, I buy my books from, there's a place here, There's a, there was an organization that started in, I don't know if it's on any of the other Hawaiian islands, but I live on the island of Maui, and it's called the Maui Friends of the Library, or something like that. And um, it was started about 100 years ago um, by a couple, and they've helped create um, they've since passed away, but it's, it's a place where, like, you can go and buy books that are being discarded. Like, people move on and off the island, and people come and visit here, and just all that sort of stuff, and you can just go buy books, and they range in price. You can get some, I get a lot of freebies from them as well, like, things that are just, like, either damaged or whatever, but you can get, they have some collectible books as well. Um, you can get just about anything from them, but, and the proceeds go to funding the public libraries here in Hawaii, which is really cool. I think they raised some crazy amount of money last year, like a quarter of a million dollars for, um, and they just got a mobile book, um, ban, and anyway, so that's where I go, or I go to yard sales, you know, or a lot of times, unfortunately, people come to visit here and they don't think about it. We're an island, you know, we're not like the mainland where you can ship your trash off somewhere. And they come and they leave their books or they leave whatever and they throw them away. And so you could go to like a thrift store here and pick a book for a dime. It may not be the book you want, but you can pick a book up for a dime instead of having it end up in a landfill. So what I'm going to do is I know it looks like a hot mess right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, um, I'm going to start taking my pages to the other side. Okay, so use generous glue, wrap your pages around, I'm going to glue in the little perforated edges parts too here. So it's beautiful Sunday here and it's been raining and I have to tell you I love it when it rains. It doesn't rain very often. Well, I mean it rains a little bit somewhere on the island every day, but not always where you are. And since we don't get the four seasons, we'll get our version of them, but it's really not. It's really just nice all the time. Not to rub it in, because I know some of you are in the midst of winter and snowstorms and and that thing. But, you know, it would be like, you need a little diversity. Maybe you don't if you've never lived anywhere but here, but I need a little diversity. So you want to just glue, put, you know, to make sure your book pages wrap around. You know, this is not, this is such a forgiving craft. I made these last year after I made them for my own tree. Maybe I made them the year before. I can't remember, you guys. My years go on. I, I didn't make them last year. I made them the year before for my tree. Last year I made them at school with my littlest one. You know, I told you guys I have a 10-year-old. A and I made them with her and her class. And we had so much fun. Um, we made We made Christmas trees, but... I like birds, so I'm going to continue with my bird thing. You know, you could do, you could use this technique for anything. I made one of my kids, if I can find it, I thought I had made a whole bunch of extra, but I, made, I give away just about everything. I do have an Etsy shop, so if you guys want to stop by there and check it out, you can. Um, what I'm selling my Etsy shop right now is I have... Um, I'm de-stashing a bunch of of stuff because I told you I moved out of my craft room and moved into a smaller space because my kids are back home and I and when I was going through it I just was like I don't need all this stuff so I'm de-stashing some dies if you guys have a die cutting machine there's some dies um, I also have some digital paper one of my Etsy stores I share with my daughter the one that is um, an engineer studying engineering when moving to Europe and she is an amazing photoshopping graphic artist style person and she made these really cool digital papers so there's some digital papers in there also if you go on Pinterest to love paper designs with a Z you can download a bunch of them for free a bunch of the digital papers for free um, she does, she's, she's super cool like that. Um, so, 
back to my my bird page, my bird rant. Um, or my Christmas ornament rant. So we make Christmas ornaments, and they're all different. I mean, some of them like are like this, you know, just made out of cardboard and paper, and then some I've made. Uh, glass ones. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't been sleeping very well. I don't know about you guys. I haven't been sleeping very well, and when I don't sleep well, I'm sort of foggy the next day. I know it's been for a couple days now. Um, in one of my Etsy shops called I Love You Thank You, I sell, um, glass work that I do. So you could go look at that if you wanted. It's all made from recycled glass. Um, so Christmas ornaments. This year I don't know what I'm going to make. You know it seems like in my house everyone's sort of like you know not usually I can get them rally them to all participate in something, but maybe we will all do I mean, I like to do it when we're all together, you know, hanging out and laughing, eating popcorn or whatever. Um, this is super forgiving. Okay, so there's not, you can't really mess it up. You will, your hands will get sticky, and as you can see, mine are still green. My thumbnail's still green from my my tie dyeing and my my alcohol ink dyeing. I've scrubbed my hands so many times, you guys. I can't even tell you. I've just got to let it go. It'll eventually wear off. So just make sure, like the areas, like that you want to wrap it around, that you've filled it, that it's you know got some glue there. Now I wouldn't worry. Somebody wrote me a comment about racy text in a book, so, you know, or sent me a message. You know what? Can I tell you something? I, the only time I have ever, that that's ever been an issue was I made a junk journal once. I made these, I found this, I'm all about the thickness of the paper when I'm making stuff. The other thing you want to think about is don't use, cut the white bits off. You know, you, you're doing it for the, uh, for the, the text part. So I usually don't use any of the white bits. I save that for something else. So the only time the racy text has ever been an issue is or ever even come to my attention was I made this friend's grandmother a junk journal. She saw one of my books, I'd given one to my friend and she saw it and she loved it and so I made her one. Now I'm all about the thickness of the page and because I'm an avid reader but I don't know some of these authors and honestly if they're like scary or horror books, I don't read them. Okay, so and I'm all about the thickness of the page because most of the time I really like to jelly print on them, you know, and use them for jelly printing and different stuff like that. So I got somebody had given me a whole bag of books, and I didn't really look through them. I just found one that I was like, oh, I really love the texture of this paper. So I used it. I made pockets and I jelly printed and I, you know, I did all kinds of stuff with it, right? For this junk journal. Well, you guys, okay. And I made it and I loved the journal and I thought it came out great. And I mailed it to my friend's grandmother who was like, she's like in her 80s. And I get this phone call and she's giggling and, um, she says, I got my book and I love it. I was like, oh, I'm so happy. And um, she's like, my hands are so sticky. She's like, I got my book. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I'm like, oh, great. And she said, and I love the way that you specially placed all of the erotica. And I was like, oh, my God. I said, all of your... So evidently, you know, I usually cover up and jelly print and paint and whatever. And I'd made all these pockets and book pages and I don't know, all these things from book pages for it. Evidently, 
on every one of the pockets that I made because it was the texture of the paper, okay? It was the texture of the paper. And every single one of the pockets that I made, and for whatever reason, in her particular journal, there were a hefty number of pockets was like some erotic passage from a, from this one book. And I was just like, oh my God. I was so embarrassed, right? But she was so, was so good spirited about it. And she was like, I actually really love it. She goes, you know, when you get my age, people think that you don't, you know, that that's a dead and done part of your life. And the fact that you would include it just made me know that you see me for a person rather than as an old person. And I was like, oh my goodness, thank goodness she didn't like take it offensively. So I'm going to tell you the same with the birds. After you've torn up all the pages, go back and look. I mean, after you've like, you know, made your birds. Now you could use a distress ink on these, you know, or a stamp pad and distress it all and that sort of thing. And that's fun too. And, you know, you won't even see it, but just in case you don't. Now, on some of the birds, I went back, like on this big one right here, I went back and I um, cut out extra things for the beak. But on this one, I think I'm just going to put, I'm going to wrap the book page around it and see if it really needs it at the end. Okay? You see what I mean? I'm going to, you know, you can paint over it too. You know, these are just, it's just cardboard and book pages. Now this is such a fun, now think about all the things you can make. I made Christmas trees with my daughter's class last year. We did them out of the same way I'm doing these. And if I can find one, I don't even know if we even got home with one. We must have, we haven't unpacked our, we haven't put up our Christmas tree yet. So when we put up our Christmas tree, maybe I'll find, be able to find one. Um, we made Christmas trees this way. Um, I made, I've made just about, you name it. We made stars. We made Christmas trees. Made angels. Um, so you could do anything. But I know a lot of people love birds, and I love birds. So, uh, this is one. I love birds. So, no, why not? Why not go for the bird thing? You know what, you guys? There is no right or wrong in this. It's just supposed to be fun. So don't get yourself all carried away that your bird doesn't really look like a bird or it's wonky. It's supposed to be like that. It's not, per it's not crafting perfection. Okay? My hands are super sticky and I didn't bring anything. Maybe one of my kids will walk by soon and I can get them to go and get me a, a wet napkin or a wet, um, a wet cloth. Okay, so let me just, let me get it to where it's like almost in a bit, a little bit better space and then I'll show you guys how to do the tail parts, which is super fun. So what's neat about these little birds is if you make them out of thin enough cardboard, you can just stick them in an envelope and don't put a hook on it, but just put a little note and say, you know, you could write, there's all kinds of fun little bird poems, you know, when I was a kid, my mom used to make bird nests for a Christmas tree, I don't know whether it's a German tradition, you know, quite honestly, I come from like a Heinz 57 type of family, like, they're all, you know, from everywhere, but in one of my family, I want to say it's a German tradition, because my grandmother was German, or her family was when they came, I mean, from a long million, however long, long time ago, um, that bird's nests were found in evergreen trees, and if you got one um, on your Christmas tree, that it was good luck. So my mom, when I was growing up, used to make bird's nests and write a little poem about something like that, which I can't remember it. And maybe somebody else wrote the poem and she was just copying it. Honestly, I don't know. But, you know, so you could do the same with these birds. You could make up your own little poem. 
or look online for something or you know find a really fun little thing a little anecdote that you feel really represents you and about good luck for the new year and that sort of thing and um, and it sounds like my neighbor's dog is deciding he's going to have he's in on the crafting the Sunday craft fiesta giving me his two cents So I've been asking for suggestions for gifts for my kids, and I've gotten some good ones. I've gotten some really good ones. Okay, I'm almost to a good stopping place. I've just got to rub my hands off. They're just so gluey. Um, I've gotten a lot of good suggestions. Somebody suggested I make gingerbread houses, which I have done in the past with my kids, which is a really fun thing. If you've never done it, it's so fun to do, and, you know, it's like a fun fun thing that consume fun consumable um but I think what I'm gonna make because I made a couple for a friend and hopefully I'll do a tutorial and I'll show you so have you guys ever made those t-shirt bags like um like shopping bags like renewable they, they did away with plastic bags here. So if you go to the supermarket here, not necessarily all the supermarkets, but if you go to some big box stores, you don't get a bag. You have to buy one. My friends are incensed that somebody that you've paid all this stuff for money and then they're going to charge you for a bag. So one of my friends, I was helping her. She's renovating her house and... You know, just like anywhere else, you it's always easier to go through your stuff when somebody else is around you. So she gave me a bunch of stuff to go to th to the thrift store. And while we were there, she was like complaining about she'd just gone shopping at one of these big big box stores here, and that they're, you know, and charging whatever it was for the book for the bag made her mad. And anyway, it started this whole tangent. So to which, when I was taking her stuff to the thrift store because she didn't go with me. I went through and I, she had, I don't know, probably 50 t-shirts on there. So I took out some of the ones that have fun like things on them. And I made a bunch of shopping bags and I will show you guys those in a, in a, in a video. And it's so easy to make. You can sew them or not sew them. I sewed some, some I didn't sew, um, and I, but I made her a whole bunch of them because I thought, you know what? She first of all, she she'll love the fact that I made it out of her stuff that she was throwing away or giving away. <coughs> and second of all, <coughs> she'll love the fact. I'm sorry, you guys. She'll love the fact that that I actually rummaged through her trash because her other thing is, is because we live on an island. She doesn't like anything to end up in a landfill, and so sometimes, you know. It, it's just sad to see what people will throw away. And so, she'll live that. So, I took, so out of all her t-shirts, I have this huge bag of t-shirts. And if I can set my camera up in a way where you guys can see it from, I'll, I'll do a whole video on some that are sewn and some that are, so anyway, I went back and I jelly printed on some. Some of them came out really good and some of them didn't. But you know what, it doesn't matter because she's going to put them in the back of her car and she's going to use them. And she's going to use them every day when she goes to the grocery store. And she's going to think about me. And I'm going to be so happy that I could give her something that's going to, you know, that's one of her pet peeves about paying for bags. And I'm going to be happy that she's using it. You know, so I will, I'll try and do a video. I always have these great intentions, you guys. But my life, I don't know about you guys, but my life gets in the way. My life gets in the way. Okay, it is super sticky and my hands are sticking to it, but it's okay. And I was just trying to get the end bits covered up so we could start on the tail, which is the fun part. But it's good. You really do need, before you start on the tail, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have the body finished, but you do have to have all these little bits because you want to wrap them. You want to wrap it. You want to wrap the book pages around it. And that's why you want to use thinner book pages. 
and it's also the reason why you want to use like thinner thinner strips when you're making it because then when you overlap it just make sure I've got lots of glue in there then when you overlap it you're not creating huge bulk so. you know and if you like have too much bulk in an area after the whole thing's dried you can take an emery board like a little fingernail file like the kind not a metal one but a you know the ones that are like made out of paper paper emery boards you can take one and you can use it to sand if you found a bit that you want I mean if you're a perfectionist these are Christmas ornaments or as my kids had them after I made them they've been sitting up in my window they've been sitting in my window my daughter was my littlest daughter said I don't want to put the birds in the in the box meaning in the Christmas box They've been hanging in my window. So, yeah, this year she said, why don't we paint them all and then it'll be different. And I was like, oh, I don't feel like painting them. I said, let's just make something new. And one of them is kind of greenish anyway. She had all these, she wanted candy on her tree too, just like my older daughter when she was little. And um, the candy canes melted on our Christmas tree. It's how hot it was. Isn't that crazy? candy canes melted on our Christmas tree and of course I didn't notice it and because we get an art we have an artificial tree because I'm allergic to trees but not just that it just seems to me to be ridiculous we live in Hawaii to buy a evergreen to have it die within like a relatively short period of time because it's really hot here now saying that there are some places that are cooler here you know if you drive up near the volcano, the Haleakala Crater, it snows up there. So, okay. It's not perfect by any means, but as we can, as we start making the tail, and I didn't totally finish this side, but I will as we go along. I mean, maybe I'll finish it really fast. Okay. So the key to the tail is these strips. These strips I've been showing you how to, to tear. Okay. So if you look at the, this, can you, uh, am I in the frame? Okay. So you want to start with, now this is where if you wanted to find your sturdier book pages, you could do it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. They're all going to work. Okay. So you want to take some, and see how they curl anyway? You want to take and you want to start. And let me just show you. Let's just start here. Start at the bottom one. And you just keep adding to it. So you tear your strips and then you mash it down on the base until you get to the point where you don't and then you don't and then you go and you get your next strip. And let me see if I have one. Oh, I'm sorry you guys. Hands are gluey and it's so easy and don't ask me how I thought about it. I don't know. You know what, half the time I, I think it was because I was had all these book pages and I think one day I was curling, I was ripping them and then they were curling and then somebody had sent me like a card with a little chickadee on it, you know, a, a chickadees from the East Coast and I don't know, one thing led to another in the stream of consciousness and that's how it came. So, just want to keep ripping them and also what's cool is this paper curls so if you find pieces you're like oh I like that or whatever just keep adding it to it so let's see and none of them are going to be perfect and that is the beauty okay that is the beauty it's not about perfection it's just about the art of having fun making it so you want to go back and you want to glue the reason you want to make sure that the very first one you put down is really good is because you're going to be adding on top of that one okay you might want to let them dry in between a little bit, but for time's sake, I'm not going to. So then, and you can go back and trim afterwards. If you don't like the way it is, it's just paper. It's used book pages, and you can go back and trim. You know, and you can decide, do you want one, two, do you want four or five, do you want six or seven? 
Okay. So you guys kind of get the idea, yeah? Let me see. I'll put, let me find another one. Just put, uh, my hands are gluey and I don't want to lay it down on the glue. Um, anyway. So, this is really all it is. Can you imagine? The possibilities are endless. If I can find the stars that we made last year, those were so cute too. I'm just going to dip the glue in that. Now, I don't have a heat gun, but if you had a heat gun, it probably would help you at this point because, you know, you see, it's getting better. It's getting there. So these birds, these little birds, start to take on a life of their own, which I really love. And they start to develop their own little personality. And it becomes really fun after a while. Now you could paint these. If you were going to paint them, I would so paint it before you add the tail. And then I would paint the strips separately. The tail strips, I would paint them separately before you glue them on. Okay. I'm sorry, you guys, it's sticky. My hands are gluey. But you start to get the general idea, right? I'm going to wipe my hands off, and then it might work a little bit. So, you know, you can let it dry in between, in between, um, I think when I made them the first time, I think I let it dry before I put the tail on. And I think I might have used, I didn't use Mod Podge, I know, because it's sort of, it's not that it's expensive, but it's more expensive than regular glue, right? Maybe I'll put this one on a different one and I'll, and I will. Find a big thick one for that bottom bit. I'll clear my space off so you can see it a little bit better. So my older daughter, the one I told you that's moving to Europe, she can't stand my mess right now. Well, it's usually it used to be self-contained in the room that she's staying in. Because I have all kinds of things in progress and in process and gifts and, you know, I sort of like a little sewing area and then I have it because I, I don't, I, I do my stuff in, in different times. I mean, it's like whenever I have time is when I do it. I don't, there's not a, there's not a uh, specific given time. It's not like I can go, oh, I'm going to do my thing now. It's like, you know what it's like when you have a family. Your life really isn't your own. And then all of a sudden you have five minutes and you think, oh, I can do all that stuff that I haven't been able to do. So, so I think I'm going to make one of my daughter's shopping bags. The one that I was going to make her a backpack. So she had this backpack, and I told you about it in one of the other videos. She had this backpack and she coveted it and loved it and all the stuff. And... Um, it got, it just wore out. I mean, she used it so much it wore out. So, I repaired it a few times, but the repair, it needs, she needs a new one. It was like, sometimes you can't repair stuff after a while. And it was made out of like some fake fabric, like faux leather. And, um, and it, and Patching it wasn't easy. Like I patched it, but it didn't. I, in my world, it didn't look good. So I'm gonna tear this one up a little bit. So anyway, maybe I can cut it because it's gluey. Um. So I was gonna make her a new backpack. So that's what. And so I had all these. I had sewn all these fabric scraps together to make like this one of a kind um, fabric. Cause I love doing that. I don't know if you guys have ever done it, but it's so fun. 
So I had sewn all these scraps together and I thought, oh, she'll love this. And then she came home the other day and she's like, oh, look at what, you know, one of her friends had bought her one. So I was like, oh, well, forget that, you know, because she's sort of a loyal, she's a loyal gift getter. Like she'll use it until it falls apart. So there went that idea. So I think I'm going to make her these shopping bags because she was complaining the other day that, you know, she, like all kids that live here, loves to go to the beach and do stuff like that. But she was complaining the other day that, um, that she likes to keep her stuff in a certain way, in a certain place and whatever and whatever. And anyway, she's a little bit picky and she'd like to be more organized. So... I was thinking maybe I'll make her one of those bags too. Um, I sort of mentioned it to my oldest daughter this morning. I said, oh, you know, would you like some of those shopping bags to take with you? And she gave me what we would call in Hawaii, stink eye. Which is like a dirty look. She gave me stink eye. She's like, I've told you a bunch of times. I don't want to take anything with me. So I just know what it feels like to like you know, come Christmas morning, not to have anything for you under the tree doesn't make you feel good. Even if it's something you don't necessarily want. So can you see it's starting to come to life and it's super easy and anybody can do it. You can do this with your kids. That's how fun it is and how easy it is. Do it with your kids. And you can do it you could do it with your grandmother if your grandma's still around. She would, they would love that. All right, you guys, I'm a big mess maker today. I use, somebody asked me why I have all these coffee lids. Okay, I use them as my paint palettes, but I also use them as my glue palettes, and I also use them as my bead catcher and my whatever. And they're transportable, portable, and I like them. Okay. So, I'm not cutting this, I'm just going to curl it. So, I save all the plastic lids from coffee cans. And I told you guys I'm in a trashy junk journal group, right? And they, in that trashy junk journal group, they have a wish list. Like, you can write in there, like, what your trashy wishes are. And it has to be trashy. It's, it has to be, like, stuff that's free or stuff that's almost free. You can't, like, write on there, I want some, you know, some some commercial thing that you expect someone to buy you. So, um, on my trashy wish list is this coffee lids because for a while I was drinking coffee, but I've come back to coffee. I love coffee. I love coffee and tea. Somebody asked me what my weaknesses are, and I said... Probably art supplies and art supplies and art supplies are definitely one of my weaknesses. And coffee, tea, and chocolate. Oh my gosh, chocolate. I haven't had chocolate in such a long time. So oh, it's getting there. Now, you know, you can go ahead. Now, I've made them a couple of different ways with the with the wings. I think I'm going to leave these brown cardboard, but you could cover them with paper too if you felt like it. So what are some of your... I hope some of you write me and tell me what some of your weaknesses are. Mine are definitely... I like, I, I like, um, good scissors. Okay, I have a thing for scissors. I like, I have a thing for, I love handmade things that are made from recycled items. Like, one day I'll show you. I make these nail rings out of, like, steel nails, and, um, I love those. Like, anything like that. I like, um... I like a good novel, like I love to read, so I love a good novel. Um, 
I love I love good coffee. Like really strong good coffee. I love. Okay, I want to make one longer there. Let's see if this is how this is gonna look here. Oh, look at there. I like good strong coffee. I like good strong tea. Oh my gosh, I was in South America in about six months ago. And they have the worst tea there, okay? The absolute worst tea. You would not think that you know, they would not have good tea, but they don't. And I have a friend, oh, she's so sweet. I love her, I love her and I go see her and stay with her. Anyway, <laughs> I was at the grocery store and I said, oh, I would love, and it was kind of cold for me. You know, living in the tropics, the weather is like, any sort of form of degree, degree change is a lot for you if you've lived in the tropics. And I was like, oh, I'd love a good cup of tea. You know, like the coffee there is amazing, okay? I, it is amazing, outstanding in South America. I was in Bogota, it was amazing. And the people are amazing. I loved it. I, I was supposed to go back and I didn't go. I was supposed to go just a couple weeks ago and I, something came up for me and I couldn't go. But anyway, I buy what I, and my favorite, like one of my, I love good black tea, but if I, if I have to say what my favorite, favorite tea is, it's mint tea, peppermint tea. Like I have a thing for it. It's like ridiculous. And, um, so I saw this mint tea and I got so excited and I thought, you know, I'm going to buy that for her because, you know, sometimes we, we take for granted lots of things and things can be pretty expensive for people that don't normally, like, she's just a teacher and, you know, anyway, I love her so much. So I buy this mint tea and I'm like all excited about the mint tea. We make it. It doesn't even taste like mint. It smells like mint, but it doesn't taste like mint. So the joke between became, you know, would you like some mint tea that's not mint tea? Would you like a, a cup of mint tea that's not mint tea? Okay, so what do you guys think? It's coming out, and I'm going to glue the sides down a little better, but my hands are so sticky. Every time I touch it, it just pulls the paper back up. Okay, so I'm going to keep going, and I think I'm going to add some more to the bottom. But do you see how easy that was? Okay. Isn't that fun? Now, I didn't finish this side, but I will. You could make these for your teacher gifts. You know, and make them with your kids. I love handmade gifts. Although saying that I'm not a teacher, I probably think about it as a preschool teacher. You probably get like 500 million things that you'll never want because they're like, you know, somebody else's kid's handprint. I don't know. Anyway. So the joke became mint tea that's not mint tea. I made her a junk journal, and can I tell you, she loved it. I mailed her, and I made her a, I made her all kinds of fun stuff. She's an artist herself, so she really appreciates, she really appreciates it. I loved, I was only in Bogota for like two weeks, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. They have the most beautiful, they have a, um, oh my gosh, a Botero Museum. And, um, you know, he's the, the artist that does the really fat people. Anyway, he is from, I don't know if he's, I can't remember if he's born in Bogota or not. I think, no, I think he's from somewhere else. Anyway, they have a museum there and it's amazing and you get to see his works and you're like standing like right on them. But what's even more, and he's still alive, but what's even more amazing is his own private collection of art that he has donated to this museum that is his it's called the Botero Museum I have to tell you guys I wept he ha he owns like or he I don't know how it works I don't, I don't know if he still I imagine he still owns it or his estate does even though he's not dead but anyway he has the most amazing collection of artwork that you've ever seen like it's a like major museum worthy collection every major artist, contemporary artist of our time, and on top of it, like, some crazy, hefty, like, um, you know, artists that you would love. Anyway, if you ever get to Bogota, go to that museum. It's so amazing. I had such a wonderful time. I'm definitely going back. I should have gone back just a couple of weeks ago, but 
I had some stuff come up that just didn't enable me to, but I will go. I'm going to try and go. Her birthday's in November. I'm going to try to go. If I don't see her in the spring, I'm going to try to go. And for her birthday next year, I'll plan it now. You know, I'm kind of a last minute kind of girl, so I kind of go by the seat of my pants, and it works for me. I know it doesn't work for everyone else, but it works for me. Okay, we're coming into the home stretch of our, of our bird. Now, how I um, put these on my trees, I just sewed through the paper and you know, poked a little hole after it was dry. Okay, optimal word after it was dry. And um, I sewed a piece of thread through it and I'll hold it up in a second and show you what I did. Okay, but you can do it any way you'd like. If you poked a hole and just put a Christmas tree hanger on it, you could. You could do just about anything. If you wanted to glue a jewelry um, head pin in, you know, a, and put a little loop on the top, you know, I guess I could do that too. I could show you guys how to do that. That's super easy. It's like an earring finding, right? I could show you how to do it if I can find my metal really quick. Okay, so. This is our bird so far. And don't look too closely in case there's some racy text because I haven't read, I don't, I didn't look at the book that I pulled the things from. Okay, let me see. Mm. All right, I have, oh, I have nippers and I have pliers and a wire. Okay, cool, because I made some jewelry here the other day. Okay, see how I sewed it right here? I just sewed it straight through the paper. I don't know, can you see it? I sewed it straight through the paper. That you can do, needle and thread straight through the paper and then put a Christmas tree hook on it. All right, but let me see if I can, let me see if I can put paper all over me. I have some copper wire right here and let me see if I can make you a little, it'll be a good thing to show you how to make because you can use this just about in any craft that you so, you know, like when you put your you put your earrings together, they're usually go to an ear wire with an head pin or an eye pin. Okay, this is a pair of inexpensive, cheap nippers, not expensive, okay? Jewelry snips, nippers, they're like six dollars. Then this is just some copper wire. I've had it for a million years. I think it's 20 gauge. It's 20 gauge copper wire and I bought it from Rio Grande which is a jewelry supply company, and I've probably had this, I don't know, a very long time. All right, so if you watch my other videos, this is so easy. Take your end of your paintbrush, right, and you're going to, what you want to do is you want to pull it over till you get across it like this. Can you see it? Let me see if I can put something dark. I have everything on the planet on this table, but nothing. Here, let's see. Can you see it here? No, it's the same color. Um, let's see. Okay. Can you see it? All right, you want to do that. Then what you want to do is you want to use your fingers. Now, this is super soft wire, and you want to wrap it around. Now, if it's too hard to wrap around, I didn't actually leave a lot, but if you can wrap it around with your fingers, that's always the best way. And then you want to continue to wrap around with some pliers if you have them, but if you don't, you don't really need them if you can. Now, you can buy cheap wire, but, you know, they have all these. They didn't have it when I was, maybe they did, I don't know, I wasn't that into it way a million years ago. Okay, can you see? And that would be considered like an eye pen, okay, with the loop on the end. Obviously, most of them don't close all the way. Now you can take them to the top of your bird. Mine's so wet, I'm getting my hands all gushy. And because it's that corrugated cardboard, you know, with the holes in it. Find my, let me find my favorite tool, my push pin. Can't, crafter cannot live without a push pin. All right, I'm gonna start my hole with my push pin. Now, if you're gonna use this, dab some glue on it because you want it to stick. Dab some glue and then just stick it into the hole where you put your push pin. Oh, poop. You cut it off. It would I thought it would be. Sorry you guys. I wasn't planning on making it. I would have tested it before. Let me cut it off. It's too long. 
Okay. But it's kind of cool because you can make, you know, I don't know if any of you guys make paper beads, but you can make your own things for your paper beads. Remember when you were kids and you made paper beads? I think the first time I ever made paper beads, I was in the third grade. I have a, I don't remember a lot about my, my schooling, but I remember I had this great third grade teacher, and she was very crafty. That's probably why I remember her. Okay, I'm going to push it all the way in there. Okay, do you see? Now let it dry. Let it, let it thoroughly dry. Let your little pen dry. Okay? And... Voila. I'm going to let my bird dry for a little bit. Maybe let me figure out where I'm going to put my wings. Um, she taught us how to make paper beads. And it was, I think I was obsessed, but way back then we would make them with just school glue, right? And you'd roll them up and you'd cut them in different shapes. But way back then, do you remember like the hairspray that we had back then or that our parents had or our mothers had? That's what we used for varnish on our, for our beads. We used the hairspray. Let me see how I want it. Okay, there's one side. We're almost done. And I know I have another one. And maybe I should have done it this direction. Let's see. Yeah, I did it the wrong direction, you guys. That's just my life. Oh, you know what? It's perfect. It'll go on this side. Like the fat side be in the front, and then the other side be in the back. Anyway, do you remember that hairspray? Oh my gosh. I remember that, I don't even know if they, do they make that still? They probably do. Of course, you know I had to do the same thing again, because that's just who I am. You guys, some days, my family calls me Lucy. Like, I love Lucy. Isn't that terrible? I guess it's terrible and it's good all at once. Um, yeah, that hairspray was awesome. I mean, not for the environment and not for, not for your lungs, but it was certainly awesome for those paper beads that you made. You could just spray shellac them with a the hair shellac. Okay. Well, once it dries, we'll be totally done. Okay. What do you guys think? Quick and easy. Anybody can make it. So let me tell you a little bit about a couple of giveaways that I have going on. Okay, so right now I still have a giveaway going on if you watch video it's number two. Watch video number two. This is video number four in this series. So I was talking last night with one of my friends and, you know, I was packing up some stuff to mail out and she said, these are all so cool. And, you know, like all the little bits and pieces. And so what I think is I'm going to try and do, I don't know how many videos, I'm going to do at least 12. So if you go back and like and comment, even on the past videos, 1 through 12, okay? Videos 1 through 12, if you go back and you like and you comment and, you know, if you make the project, I'm going to enter you guys into a drawing. And and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put at least one of everything that I've made into a package. And at the end of all the videos, after all is said and done, um, I'm going to pick a winner from random.org. But you have to have watched all 12 videos. You have to have watched, liked, and commented on all 12 videos. And then you'll be entered in to a random.org drawing and you will win a big gift box of one of every single thing that I'm making in this series. So that'll be my way of thanking you all and my way of saying Happy New Year. And it'll be shipped to you after Christmas, okay? Because I think I'm going to do, I have an idea for Christmas Eve. I'm going to do a Christmas Eve video. So it'll be shipped to you after Christmas. The winner will be picked after Christmas. Anyway, thank you guys for sharing your time with me. Big hugs, lots of aloha. Send me pictures of the ornaments you make using this crazy, ridiculous paper technique. Anyway, as always, from my heart to your heart, have a crafty and wonderful day. Take care.